thank you and thank you for the invitation. I, uh, it's not the first time I talk here, but uh, it's, always, it's always wonderful to be here. Um, I want to start asking a question, why is it important to talk about memory, the title is Collective Memory for Kosovo and European Identity? Uh, because memory uh, is an identity builder, uh, and um, just to mention one that, that's famous, David Hume, in his treatise uh, of human nature, we're talking about the 18th century, uh, stated very clearly that memory is the source of personal identity. Because memory raises up images of past perceptions, uh, perception of experiences that uh, we had. Uh, and, and the frequency of this uh, process also establishes a link between different uh, experiences and different memories, and it constitutes the whole of the individual identity. And the identity also goes beyond the individuals. We are talking about collective memories of memories of nations. And why this is important also? Because uh, for nations, memory establishes a link with the past. Um, that produce, produces what uh, that which is called an invented tradition by by Hobsbawm. Um and it's not invented in the sense that, that it's false. It's invented because it comes out of a process of imagination, of transmission through generation, of constructions um, by groups also that are trying to affirm, that are struggling to affirm, or any pose or impose their memory of the past. Uh, and and it, it is an imagination also. You know, Jung distinguishes between uh, memory and imagination, but memory is also an imagination, and it's what Benedict Anderson uh, calls, actually, uh, established and uh, connects to the uh, building of, of nations. Nations are imagined communities. Um, and actually, uh, nowhere as here, this is evident in the connection that, for instance, Albanians feel with Albanians uh, as a nation, with Albanians that live all over the world in the diaspora or, or in, in the nearby countries. And, uh, and this, um, this collective memory that is linked to an identity, that is linked to tradition for, for nations, is also a memory that is uh, presents different uh, characteristics. It's built on a plurality of memories, a flexible memory, memories, a changeable memory. When I talk about collective memory, I'm not talking about something that is always fixed and, and lasts forever, you know, forever uh, unchanging. And it is a memory that is uh, constructed, as I mentioned, as I mentioned before. Now, how do societies remember? And I'm sorry if I give this. Uh, a short introduction just to uh, just establish some, some parameters on which we can agree. How do societies remember? They remember toward, uh, uh, through uh, history production, through uh, cultural production, film, literature, uh, building of monuments, through commemorations and, and rituals, stories told by generation to our new generation. And all of this um, produce and build image of an identity of a person, of a nation. Collecting memory post-war Kosovo uh, is not just one memory. Uh, field of memory is a battlefield. So it's actually appropriate that I, I choose the battlefield of Kosovo to talk about collecting memories in, in Kosovo after the war. Uh, the field of memory is a battlefield. Um, and, and it includes memory and forgetfulness. Um, just to give an example, I mean, this process of branding Kosovo, the current process of branding Kosovo as uh, a newborn state, newborn, no past, uh, no memory, only future. Uh, and this future is uh, Europe, modernity, openness, is abstract enough to be acceptable to anyone and to be good. Uh, it's, uh, uh, this is not the Europe of the past. It doesn't refer to what we call um, you know, following different key for gears, this ethic uh, notion of Europe, but not a thin notion. It's, it's not you, the Europe of values in a certain sense, the Christian uh, uh, Europe. It's, it's, it's a Europe of development, of progress, and peace. The world is peace, the stress is peace, and, and, and development, progress, no memory, no past. Perparimi is a word that we see a lot. And in Kosovo, it, it, it implies this. Uh, you know, looking to the future and, and progress. And, um, and I want to uh, 
uh, evoke an image because I've been studying uh, the uh, collective memory and production of, the, of an Albanian identity of Kosovo for a while. And connected to this, I wanted to, uh, to mention that my, my um, uh, I wouldn't call it a surprise, but I was just noticing uh, in, the, in the, the airport, uh, now it's named Alem Yashari, appropriately, um, and the picture of Alem Yashari at the airport that you see, and it's not the usual representation of Alem Yashari with the gun, with military fatigue, you know, but looking like a fighter. Um, and it, it's just his face. So it's, we know we, that it's sim, but we, we don't quite have the context that is usually uh, present for the standard border of and, and when he's in full figure and, and with the guns looking more like uh, with the image that evokes the revolutionary, the Barbudos of the front in, uh, in, in East Timor or, or Cuba. But um, I notice it because I, as I keep interviewing people um, in groups uh, in Kosovo since now 2003, and ask the same questions through the years to see how people. Uh, and ask, uh, I ask uh, uh, school children, uh, what do they know or what do they think about the Yashari? And in previous years, they would tell me that he was a freedom fighter, uh, a hero of the Albanian nation. He did great things for the Albanian nation. But lately, um, uh, students have been telling students, great school students, that he was a man of peace. Uh, so even the figure of Adam Yashari that is, is now developing into uh, a figure of peace. Uh, this also squares with the new construction of the memorial complex in, uh, in Prekas that has a field of peace. Uh, so not only the commemoration of the struggle, but uh, just uh, to the left, looking at the graveyard, um, there is a field of peace with different columns, and, and it commemorates uh, what I've been told was the use of that part of the property for blood feuds reconciliation in 1991, in which apparently uh, uh, Adam Yashar's father Shoban also participated as mediator, as the old man. Now, uh, this is interesting that there is also this addition to the, uh, the tradition of, the, of fighting and, and resistance to death, because this is very much part also of the experience of the history of Kosovo. But it's a memory that is a little bit left on the back burner now. So it's the peaceful um, tradition, uh, the civil disobedience. And in, the 19, in 1991, uh, the uh, important and large campaign for blood feud reconciliation that concerned more than 3,000 uh, blood feuds. Uh, at the head of which there were um, students, uh, also intellectuals, like Anton Schechte, whose name is not much remembered now. And that people don't remember him, of course. You know, so now when I say these things, oh, you always have to you always have to think about some qualifiers. Um, but I, I heard uh, recently I was talking to a, to a diplomat uh, who knows a lot about Kosovo, uh, and he told me that he has been mentioned in the name of Anton Chet. It's to me, he said, people say, what you mentioned? Yeah, this is he was a student of folklore. Actually, he wasn't just a student of folklore. He was a very important person, a very important figure in this process, peaceful process of reconciliation. But. Um, and, and, and peace now. What is at the forefront? Not of the memory in Kosovo, not, not peace. Um, that is something that to look forward, it's a newborn. Um, but it is still the memory of resistance for Albanians. Uh, and for Serbs, memory of Kosovo has to reach back um, to uh, 1389, fundamentally, although there are other dates and other memories, but for Serbs, as to go back to 1389. And this is why I chose to talk about the uh, battlefield of Kosovo, or Gazimestan, because as a site, as a particular site of memory, uh, is the memory of the battle of June uh, 1389, um, is, is a site in which different memories meet and collide. Um, and Albanians have other sites of memory, so we're not talking only about the Albanian memory of Kosovo. There is also, of course, Prekas, there is uh, Rajak. Uh, there are monuments all over the country. And these are all sacred places. Uh, but Gazim is done in, uh, in, in interesting ways, and which I uh, found out when I was doing research again on the resistance and, and on Adam Yashari, and I came across the epic 
on the last course of the Middle East coverage, the synthesis is, is interesting also to understand uh, uh, the, the very complicated Albanian memory and identity of Kosovo. Okay, what is, everyone knows what the battle of Kosovo is, so I'm not going to uh, repeat that. It's, just, uh, it's a, it's a uh, kind of important battle, uh, yeah, of which actually we know very little, except that the two uh, leaders of the armies died or killed, Prince Lazar. On the, on the Balkan side and uh, um, Sultan Murad the first on the Ottoman side, uh, and we know also that the uh, um, Sultan was killed by a knight of the opposite camp. Although there is no absolutely no hist historical record of who this person was, there's no document or no no no. Uh, uh, there is only oral tradition. Is there only or oral memory or oral stories that were told from uh, generation to generation about this, and this memory is various. Now, on, on, Serbian, on the Serbian side, uh, around the battle of Kosovo and around Gazimistan, the physical place, a storyline of the nation has been built that clings to uh, memories of an old Christian hostilities toward Armenian Muslims since 1309, so which uh, on Gazimistan, it, it, we, we find a, a, a memory and identity of Serbia that is anchored on the idea that Serbia is Western, Christian, uh, European, uh, against the Asiatic jihadist uh, Albanians, which is an ideology that is displayed over and over again at critical times. Uh, and it's not always there again, it's just this, this um, um, memories and identities do change and are used uh, differently, but it's, still, but it's always there. Uh, and every 